These are potato flakes. Do you have them in your long-term food storage? Do you even know what to do with them? One of our viewers, Marin, contacted us and wanted to know if we knew anything else she could do with potato flakes besides the traditional mashed potatoes or thickening sauces or soups with it. So Mary, this video is for you. In this video, we're gonna talk about storing potato flakes and some of the important things that you need to know about that, along with some really tasty ideas for using the potato flakes in your storage. Potato flakes are an amazing and versatile food. We hope that you'll look at the post for this. It's potato flakes, delicious and versatile long-term food storage staple for some really great ideas. Let's start by talking about the different varieties of potatoes that you may have in your long-term food storage. Potato flakes are very different because they are just flaked potatoes. Many of the other contents that you see here are potato pearls or granules different varieties of potatoes, and a lot of them have lots of oils and flavorings and additives added to them so that they will make fabulous instant mashed potatoes. Some of them, all you do is add water and you have these incredible mashed potatoes. The problem with that in your long-term food storage is that the oils actually reduce the shelf life, so you're not gonna get that good 25 to 30 year shelf life. And the other problem with it is it's not as versatile. Because potato flakes are just potatoes, you can use them in a wide variety of recipes and they will store for 30 years if they're stored appropriately. So today, this video, we're gonna talk about potato flakes. Now the shelf life of potato flakes varies depending on the packaging. So if you are purchasing potato flakes in a carton, a box, or a bag at your local market, those potato flakes have about a one to two year shelf life depending on how they're stored. And they are fantastic to use in your short term food supply. But if you're going to store potato flakes for your emergency survival food supply, we're gonna to need to package them a little bit differently. You have two other main choices. One is in a Mylar bag or pouch, and that will have a shelf life of 15 to 20 years. But if you store it in a number 10 can, you're looking at a 25 to 30 year shelf life. Now, of course, all of this is dependent on you storing it in a cool, dry location. Probably should note that if you do store it in the Mylar bags, you probably want to package that in a plastic bucket just to make sure you don't have rodent or other issues. Just another thought on the Mylar bags. That's a very good point. That added layer of protection that the bucket provides is really important for the Mylar bags. So let's look at the servings and calories. The serving size is a half cup as reconstituted and that contains about 80 calories. So in a Mylar bag you're going to have about 50 servings or the equivalent of about 4,000 calories. The number 10 can, not quite as many 39 servings and 3,120 calories. The reason why it's important to understand the amount of calories in that can is because when, in your survival food supply, you are calculating a minimum calorie of 2,400 to 2,500 calories per day per person. So you need to actually understand how many calories, whatever it is that you are storing, contains so that you can make sure you have enough calories to really sustain yourself in, the, in a disaster type situation. The thing I really like about mashed potatoes is you can have it as mashed potatoes, but there are other great ways to use those, and Kylene's gonna delve into that. You can do mashed potatoes smothered in all kinds of different kinds of gravies. You can make a twice-baked potato casserole. You can take the mashed potatoes and make, fry them up and make mashed potato patties. You can make a goulash, shepherd's pie. You can even make a crust for a quiche. While the focus of this video isn't mashed potatoes, don't overlook mashed potatoes as a fantastic addition to your survival food supply. Potato flakes can be used as a thickener in soups, gravies, and sauces. It is best, if you're going to use it in a gravy, to actually put it in a coffee grinder or a food processor and turn it more into a potato flour. So add it a teaspoon at a time so you don't over thicken it and stir it and let it set for a second, couple seconds, and then add a little bit more until you get the perfect consistency for what you are wanting to thicken. Potato flakes can be used as a coating for chicken, fish, or pork. 
This is a delicious recipe where we just put garlic salt, potato flakes, and Parmesan cheese, and we mix that all together, dipped the chicken in butter, and then dredged it in that coating mix, and we baked it, and it was delicious. All of these recipes are in our post, Potato Flakes, Ideas to Create Delicious Meals from Food Storage. Potato flakes can be used as a filler for meatloaf or meatballs to replace the, the crackers or the oats or the breadcrumbs, whatever you usually use as a filler in your meatloaf. You can just replace it equally with the potato flakes. Potato flakes take on the flavor really well. It's a great way to extend your meats. Now, this is where I think potato flakes shine. This is my recipe for basic potato flake bread. When you add potato flakes to a bread recipe, it has a way of making that dough light and fluffy and moist. It's just incredible. The dough will raise faster because the yeast reacts with the potassium that's in the potatoes and you just get this really light, fluffy dough. And as you can see here, I use the same dough in a variety of different applications. First one is potato flake bread. If you notice up in the left-hand corner, you'll see how airy that dough got. It was absolutely delicious garlic parmesan rolls. And what we've done with this, we've taken that same dough, we've just rolled it in a little bit of butter and then rolled it in a coating of parmesan cheese and garlic salt. Just absolutely delicious. And then I sprinkle a little bit of cheddar cheese on top of it to make it look really pretty. Cinnamon rolls. This is not a really sweet dough, but it works really well to make cinnamon rolls because you're adding that filling where you've got the butter, the cinnamon, and I like to use coconut sugar, but you can also use brown sugar in that filling for the cinnamon rolls. You roll it up and then you're frosting it with that cream cheese frosting. Delicious. Survival food at our home isn't boring or tasteless. It's very good, it's very yummy, it is satisfying, it's nutritious, and the kids love it. That doesn't mean everybody gets to come to the Jones house when disaster strikes, because there's only so much room here. The trick is for you to learn how to do this at your house. Here are some great resources. Three months supply of food, amazing peace of mind. Also ingenious places to store your emergency food supply, long-term food storage, creative solutions to build a critical assets. These are in the show notes. We hope that you'll look at them. They are packed full of good information that we think you can use. Looking at all those mouth-watering foods makes me want to go out and stock up on more potato flakes for our emergency food supply. The versatility and nutrition that the potato flakes offer makes it a really good candidate for long-term food supply, and we highly recommend it. And now for the question of the day. What delicious recipes do you have using potato flakes? They're versatile. They can be used in so many different things and I am sure there is a wealth of information out there and great tips for us. So comment below and thanks for being part of the solution.